ground as per the floor plan. The thermal wrap and the tires go up at the same time with the back bearing. It's a process that goes up one tire at a time providing the thermal wrap and burial support for the tires as they go up. Uh, again, following the floor plan. The cisterns go in at this point as the, in the appropriate place and uh, rebar pins go in to anchor the bond beam which is formed by aluminum cans uh, to the tire work. The birdcage steel goes in at the same time uh, anchored into the bond beam itself. The birdcage is a form for a ferro-cement uh, vaulted roof structure. Here you can see how it is anchored into the bond beam with the steel. Uh, it is set up to receive several coats of plaster and be a ferro-cement dome. The little footing across the front uh, will take uh, some framing uh, as per the architectural drawings. Non-bearing framing, just filling in for glass and a door. The vaults are then plastered and uh, the first coat of plaster usually has some fiber in it to make it so it doesn't go through the mesh that is inserted underneath the rebar and like I say three or four coats of plaster gives us a ferro cement dome that's very safe, very lightweight. Uh, next we would be looking at the masonry work of aluminum cans going up around the vaults with a batter slightly leaning in and uh, a wrap of insulation and then uh, filled with dirt for a very simple thermal roof detail that will allow us a plane of earth on which to pour a slab that will give us a basic slab roof. We usually put insulation down there depending on the climate before we pour the slab. The slab then will drain into the cisterns. Uh, this is using bottle or can masonry to form up for the dirt. Uh, we usually put a vapor barrier in right uh, after the insulation as well under the slab. And then we bring the same detail around the little vaults, uh, cap the thermal wrap, and uh, bring the earth up for the final burial and there's the gutter going into the cistern. Now we have the cisterns being wrapped in insulation and the final burial and shaping of earth going on to wrap the building. The front face greenhouse carpentry goes in and the insulation on top of the greenhouse, the metal flashing, uh, the place for the panels is delineated and they're installed. The operable gravity skylight is installed and the building is essentially uh, put together. At this point we insulate the tire work in front of the greenhouse, put metal over it, bring up a burial there to snug the building in and we are looking at the basic structure being done. Then planting goes in the botanical cells and uh, landscaping and we end up with a uh, simple survival model earthship. Uh, drawings, uh, architectural drawings for the systems will accompany this. Now we're looking inside the room uh, out toward the botanical cells which are planted as soon as possible. Uh, again, drawings for them are in the architectural set of how to achieve that. Uh, so this is the overview of the building. Now we're looking at doing replications uh, as it is uh, possible to do this in two U's, uh, three U's, four U's, however many you want. Uh, the same process is applied to make a, a full-on home uh, as many rooms as you want. Um, taking this basic model and turning it into uh, quite a large home if necessary. It is a very simple set of details to put together um, to replicate several times over and make a proven uh, earthship with all systems working.
just a quick walkthrough of what we did for this project was um, we laid out a 12 foot diameter circle and pounded up seven courses of tires and put one of our bottle formed bond beams on top of that and came out of that with a steel bird cage that uh, we plaster and turn into a dome. Uh, we then did another steel bird cage a couple of feet above that one and that gave us a cavity to put in insulation. It was torn up cardboard and styrofoam put in rice bags and then put in a plastic bag. We did another rebar shape to keep the rain out but allow ventilation at all times and there we had a six foot diameter cistern veneered with bottles laid in cement to make it last forever and then a five foot diameter shower and a five foot diameter toilet. It was all just a series of shapes made from materials that we found in Port-au-Prince in addition to concrete and rebar. All right, so at the Haiti building when it rains, the main dome collects water that runs through gutters over an entry arch to the cistern. When you want to take a shower, you turn on a valve at the bottom of the cistern and you fill a five gallon bucket. And then that water drains simply through the floor of the shower into a plastic lined hole that then overflows into a gray water botanical cell. That water is feeding the plants of the botanical cell and also you fill a bucket with that used gray water to bucket flush your toilet with. The tank in this case is a stack of tires that contains the solids. As they break down, they seep out between the tires and under the tires. Then when the liquids reach a certain level, they overflow into the Blackwater Botanical Cell. And then that overflows, but it rarely does. But just in case, it went outside to another cell where at the end of the line there, you uh, also are growing plants and vegetables. The combined material cost of everything involved in the Haiti building was $4,000.